Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to the video. I'm going to share with you the five apps that I use to study Japanese. I feel like this setup is pretty well balanced. I'm able to focus on pretty much everything that you should when you're learning Japanese, which is the alphabet, the vocabulary, the grammar, pronunciation, and listening. So let's just get right into the video. So for vocabulary, uh, I gain exposure to it pretty much through three ways, but I'll mainly just talk about one right now, which is Wani Kani, which this is like my favorite app actually. It's very convenient. I used to just study the Joyo Kanji, which is basically like the 2136 most common characters. I think it's also the characters that they learn in Japan through grade school to the end of high school, but the order is changed to make it a more logical way for someone who doesn't speak Japanese to learn Japanese because it's by use instead of just the order that they teach it in Japan, if that makes sense. The good thing with Wanikani is it'll give you mnemonics so that you can just read the mnemonic and then when you see the character later, if you can't remember the meaning or the pronunciation, you can just think about the mnemonic and you'll eventually remember it. So it's good to like seriously consider the mnemonic if you just don't already know the meaning of the character, for example. I actually find it very helpful and for me it works. So also like you'll see like tons of new words like Recently, I saw like 10 new words with the kanji energy because I already knew the meaning of this character and then the meaning of another character. Sometimes they weren't always very clear, but when you had the mnemonic and then you thought about it from that context, it was quite easy to remember the meaning for me personally. And then it's also space repetition, so you'll just keep getting exposure to these words over time and eventually you just understand the word and you can use it. So Awani Kani is great for learning kanji. It's very convenient and efficient, which is something I like. You do have to pay for it, but I don't really think it's too expensive. I have like a 60 day review on Awani Kani already. You can watch that video if you like. So I do watch like drama, anime, and YouTube videos in Japanese. This is the part that I kind of slack on a little bit, just simply because I put more time into the other things because I think they're going to help me reach my goals a little bit faster. But doing this part is definitely going to help with listening and pronunciation. I wouldn't recommend watching anime for pronunciation because it's very dramatic. Even in dramas it's a little dramatic but it's a lot more natural overall. But if you want to do shadowing, which it would be very helpful for improving your pronunciation, you should definitely listen to videos in Japanese. And like watch them, find someone whose voice you like, and then try and copy them as much as you can. And then you can record your voice and then compare it to how this person sounds. And then you can kind of try to get closer each time. And this will help you sound more native and it can help make your accent less hard to understand. Japanese pronunciation is relatively simple, but if you have an accent, which most people do when learning another language, for some people it can be hard to understand. Even if your grammar and your vocabulary use is easy to understand, they might not be able to understand what you're saying simply because it just sounds kind of muddied. So improving your pronunciation is definitely good but I personally feel like it's something better to work on towards the end. So for tandem, I also get more exposure to vocabulary, and I also call some of the people each week, so that'll also help with pronunciation, as well as listening practice, and you get more access to vocabulary, if I didn't say that already. And then also just repeatedly messaging people in Japanese and asking them to correct you, or you Google a word, and then you try that word and see if it works the way you want it to. If you're, new, if you're grabbing a new word out of a dictionary, just copy it and paste it into a Google search, and then view an image for it and see if it's what you wanted. For example, Cho. I googled butterfly, I put it in Google, and it showed me pictures of butterflies, for example. So it means butterfly. And then I even said that 
And then I used this word in a message to someone with a picture of a butterfly and they understood what it is. So it probably means butterfly. So that's another good way to just check something real quick. And finally, I still use Anki. So while Wanikani is a space repetition system, what that means is over time it'll show you the characters and the words in the vocabulary right before you're supposed to forget it and then it'll reinforce it in your mind so that you don't forget it and you keep it in your mind so you don't forget it basically Anki is the same system but you can make your own cards I still make my own cards with Anki if I see like new vocabulary or a new grammar rule somewhere I'll put it into Anki and then I'll look at it and then I'll think about it and then I'll remember it or I won't and then I'll continue on if I see a new word from a game, or I see a sentence from a show that I like and I want to remember it, or I'm texting someone on Tandem, and they say a sentence that I like, I'll put it in Anki. This way I can read that sentence later, and hopefully remember the meaning and not forget it. That's pretty much all I do to study Japanese. I'm about an N4 level right now, in about a year and a half, which isn't like insanely fast progress, but I feel like I have a pretty... I feel like I have a pretty strong general understanding of Japanese overall. As for when I'll study, I, I do commute a lot, so if I'm on the train, I'll just study Wanikani or reply to text messages on tandem on the train. That way I'm not doing nothing for three hours each day. That's so long, I know, but it's a good time to utilize studying Japanese. I messed around with like reading news articles in Japanese, but I found it boring. Also maybe because I couldn't completely understand them, but there was one I understood for like 90%. It just wasn't that interesting to me. So I focused more on these other things for now. That's all I have for this video, everyone. Thank you for watching. Hope you have a good day. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.